Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see up on the screen, today I want to talk a little bit about SoFi Technologies Incorporated. Uh, we're on the road today, so uh, you know we're, we're out of an Airbnb trying to make a little video. So we got a little bit of a scuff set up, but um, you know, hopefully we do, we'll be doing the best we can. Uh, hopefully the mic still sounds okay and everything, but uh, kind of a rough day for SoFi today, obviously. Um, this is, I believe, yes, uh, obviously we're at new all-time lows again. Uh, the video I made yesterday, we were at all-time lows and and now we're down 3.18% from there. Um, not great. Obviously, you know, from those uh, kind of intraday lows, we had a little run up, you know, bounce back over 3%, but then uh, kind of crash back down. So overall, very, very rough day. But when we take a look at the rest of the market, uh, you'll see it was a really, really rough day in the market overall. Dow Jones down 2.8%, S&P down 2.7%, uh, NASDAQ 2.55% down, and Russell 2.55% down. So a lot of the major indices were down over 2.5%, if not close to 3%, which for those indexes, that is massive. And the fact that, um, you know, SoFi was only down 3.18%, it's like, that's kind of good good? I, I mean, if you told me like some of these things were going to be down close to 3%, I would guess SoFi might be down 5, 6, 7, 10%. Um, so maybe they're starting to hold up a little bit better. Um, but but obviously when there's blood in everything, SoFi is going to get hit hard. A um, little bit rough, but uh, yeah, we'll be going over the latest for SoFi stock today keeping you guys up to date. So definitely drop a like if you do enjoy it. I would appreciate that a ton. Uh, subscribe to you up to date on all my latest content. And of course, as always, uh, there's not going to be any financial advice in this video. I'm not telling you guys to buy anything. Not telling you guys to sell anything, nothing like that. Uh, just giving some of my thoughts and opinions on uh, news in the market and, and about stocks and stuff. So, uh, with that being said, let's get right into this year to date. What are we looking at? Minus five point two. Uh, minus 59.25% in still less than four months. Jeez, man, it just goes from bad to worse all the time. But uh, we got a couple articles to go over today. We have the Motley Fool down over 50% year to date. Is SoFi now a buy? Um, that's definitely what a lot of people are wondering because you know, like, hey, we're at all time lows. We're at all time lows again. And then we're going lower and then we're going lower. You know, it just seems like things can only get worse. It seems like things are never going to get better. But obviously, that's not how it works. You know, when things are running up insanely high, eventually they're going to come back down. When things are running insanely low, eventually they're going to turn around. Eventually, you know, things are, are going to have some some good weeks, some good months, you know, consecutive. Uh, we're going to have crazy times again. We're going to have times where things are overvalued again and, and overbought rather than just oversold and oversold and, and oversold. But when is that time going to be? Is it time to buy today? Is it next week? Is it next month? Is it two years from now, you know, whatever. Um, so let's see what the Motley Fool at least has today. They say SoFi reported fourth, uh, reported record fourth quarter in numbers, but the company's share price is still at all-time lows. Uh, SoFi's top line has grown at a compound annual rate of 54% over a three-year span. Uh, and the ongoing pullback has made SoFi's valuation very attractive. Again, so that is, you know, what they're saying. Um, they do talk about their record fourth quarter. You know, for those who don't know, SoFi provides financial products. Uh, the company reported an adjusted top line 1.01 billion, translating to a robust 63% increase year over year. Fourth quarter adjusted EBITDA before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization amounted to 5 million, representing the sixth consecutive quarter where the metric finished positive. Member ads grew 39% sequentially, uh, had the student loan moratorium expire in January as originally planned. Management forecast that revenue would have reached between 310 and 320 million for the first quarter, fourth quarter. Uh, first quarter. However, it is now projecting, uh, you know, the new numbers and stuff. And this is all stuff we already know, especially people who follow SoFi really, really close. But here's what I think is more interesting. Um, the alluring valuation. In October of 2021, SoFi was trading at 7.2 times sales. Today, the company pegs a price to sales multiple of 5.4. Fundamentally speaking, a slump in valuation is staggering considering SoFi's 63% growth in 2021 and projected expansion above 50% in the upcoming year. And it just kind of compares SoFi, uh, you know, and their price to sales uh, compared to a bunch of other kind of fintech companies, Upstart, Robinhood, Affirm, Lemonade, and Block. Uh, and Robinhood's kind of right in the middle right now. You know, we're at a uh, 5.4. Uh, we are still higher than it looks like, what, Robinhood and Block. Um, but, you know, we are lower than Affirm, lower than Upstart, and, and lower than Lemonade. So uh, just kind of giving you guys an idea there of, you know, what's going on. But they do say SoFi could be a good play today. SoFi's losses make it a risky investment today. That said, the proof is in the pudding. SoFi continues to demonstrate its ability to grow rapidly, even with obstacles like the student loan moratorium lingering over the company's head. Uh, as the abandonment of cash in everyday transaction gains momentum, the demand for SoFi's uh, services will likely increase. And considering that SoFi's valuation has reached 52-week lows, 
now might be the time to add this stock to your long-term portfolio. And that's kind of what I have been saying a, a little bit, at least in my opinion. I think it could be an interesting time to pick up SoFi. Um, because again, like I said, hey, record fourth quarter. Um, you know, is, is 2022 looking that insane? No, but there's a lot of headwinds. There's a lot of, um, you know, obviously the student loan uh, moratorium is some kind of issue and stuff. Uh, and, and there's definitely a lot going on, but you know, we're at 639. We are way, way, way below, uh, where this company had been previously. And that's before even some of these record quarters, before some of this good news had come out before the bank charter, before, uh, you know, the technesis acquisition and, and all this different stuff. Um, so, you know, I just think people who were buying the company back here at, you know, over $20 or $15 or whatever, and then over $20 again, if you could justify it then and you love the stock and love the story then, then I don't know. It seems like it would at least be worth consideration now, but um, obviously everyone has different opinions. We also have this article um, talking about the uh, the 10 best SPACs to buy now, according to Glenn Dubin's High Bridge Capital. Um, and I do believe that SoFi, I, I don't know what number SoFi is on this list, but I do believe uh, that they are on this list. So we will take a look at that. Uh, apparently, we have to continue reading at the next article. They just said uh, the top... Um, okay. I don't know where it is, but apparently, uh, I thought SoFi was on this list. Like this comes up as a SoFi article, um, on Google. So I'm going to assume that SoFi is in, uh, their 10 best facts to buy now. Um, on the SoFi stock subreddit, we have a Morningstar DBRS confirming strong credit performance of SoFi's 2021 issued student loan asset backed security. So obviously that is, uh, a good sign. Um, you know, obviously we still have some, some negativity and stuff going on in the subreddit overall, but but, um, you know, obviously confirming the strong credit performance there is going to be good and should add some um, confidence in, in, in the different student loans I have going on and everything, even though uh, it's a crazy market where, you know, there's people concerned about defaulting or, or struggling to pay stuff back or, or um, you know, exactly what's going to happen. But um, at least some good news there. We also have this guy talking about perspective. Looking at the SoFi stock today and the glaring price of the stock will make you uh, neglect the fact that there is no sell rating on this stock. That in and of itself is just amazing. And I thought that that was a very, very interesting point as well. Um, you know, everyone's saying, or not everyone, but it seems like a lot of people out there on social media and in articles and stuff right now is like, oh, SoFi sucks. You know, SoFi is going to, to $2 or $3 or like that last guy said, it's going to be a penny stock or it's, it's going to zero or whatever. And it's like, that's not what the analysts are saying. Yes, the analysts are lowering their price targets a lot of the time because um, as the stock price goes lower and lower, like if they kept their price targets up, that would be like insane amounts of growth in short periods of time. But um, they're still saying they think it's a strong buy. They're still saying it's maybe a buy or a hold or that it makes sense and that it can still go up over time. Um, but not a lot of people out there are just saying you should flat out sell this thing, especially at all time lows, because it wouldn't make sense to have bought it up here and then to, to sell it down here. You know, that's just kind of backwards. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of good news there or at least some positivity. Uh, this person did post that Spruce runs on SoFi's platform, i.e. SoFi wins no matter what. And I thought this was really, really cool. Um, you know, the Spruce Mobile Banking, they're number 74 on the finance charts. SoFi is 83. Um, and, and yeah, this is kind of like, uh, you know, Amazon with like AWS or Microsoft with Azure or whatever. Um, you know, I think a lot of these streaming services run on Amazon's AWS. So they're like, hey, whether it's Netflix or, or whatever streaming company ends up winning, you know, Amazon's going to be winning because AWS is, is running all these things. So, um, you know, if they do do great great if somebody else does great great they're, they're still getting a share of that they're still um you know winners in the end and and you know obviously there's big comparisons maybe unrealistic maybe great comparisons between sofi and amazon or aws or whatever and um you know saying hey spruce is maybe doing well maybe they're trending up they're number 74 on the finance charts and and sofi is getting a piece of that as well so not only you know do you have the opportunity for what sofi is going to do in the future we have the opportunity for what um everyone under their umbrella is going to do in the future and the new people that they're going to bring in in the future um so i thought this was kind of cool to see as well and, and kind of an interesting point that this guy made um, you know, just people to kind of taking a look at the other largest banks and bank holding companies by market cap. And, uh, you know, talking about how, uh, there is a lot of opportunity out there for SoFi to obviously, uh, steal away market cap and steal away numbers and steal away growth and steal away revenue and everything from these companies. That's obviously been their goal to kind of take down, um, those traditional, um, financial institutions and stuff like that. And then we also have this guy talking about the pros and cons of Noto, which I thought was interesting. Um, he says pro Anthony Noto is a no nonsense person, mission driven, competitive, authentic and grounded the cons are that he lacks charisma and he's not an idea guy and i think it's kind of interesting because obviously when you are investing in a company you are at least partly if not largely investing in you know the management and the the ceo and and the the public facing guys and all that stuff and um you know like when you look around at companies obviously like elon musk and 
Tesla and, and all these different things. Um, you know, there, there can be some benefits to having a CEO that you truly believe in and a leader that you believe in and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we've seen companies succeed and fail, um, you know, kind of independent of CEOs at times as well. So just kind of interesting, but uh, just wanted to give at least somebody else's thoughts and opinions on there. And I thought it was kind of a funny post, but that's pretty much everybody's video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about SOFI. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, stay up to date on all my latest content. Hope we catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.